Uh, could you tell us who you are, where you're from, and what you're doing out here today? Um, should I get my whole name? Yeah, if you want to, yeah. Okay, my name is Brianna Cuyazzo, Um and I'm here today to show support and solidarity for the people of Richmond who don't want this stadium to be built. And uh, in, in regards to other people not wanting it to be built, I guess you yourself don't want it to be built then too, right? Yes. yes. And uh, can you tell us why you don't want it to be built? Um, well, there's a lot of reasons why it shouldn't be built, um, but one of the main reasons is that it is being built in a very historic area where um, oppression was very strong and it shows the history of Richmond and it would be a very positive force to acknowledge that history in a way that's more beneficial to the people of Richmond as opposed to a huge stadium being built with taxpayer dollars in an area where there's really no room for it None of the locals want it, um, and it, there's, it's just a really bad idea. Yeah, so I guess how do you feel in general, um, I guess with the local government, taking your money to fund the sports hobbies of uh, other people? Um, it's very infuriating, especially considering the situation of Richmond City Schools right now, um, and the people of Richmond and, and the type of situation that they're living in, they, that money could go to a lot better uses than building a stadium that's really not that beneficial for anyone. Right. Uh, so a, a couple years ago, there was a report from the Cato Institute that came out. They did a study of over 30 cities with uh, government-backed uh, sports stadiums. And they found, after the conclusion, that actually produces no positive uh, uh, economic benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, and these are information, of course, that they won't uh, share with you. Uh, so how do you feel about them getting, you know, I guess, when they say that they want to get, like, uh, an, I guess, an audit form, like a, a research report, but that's kind of like uh, trying to hire a cousin, you know, to on the other side to kind of, you know, do that report for you, right? Yeah. Uh, so it seems kind of unfair, not as balanced uh, when they kind of put out the, that information, would you say? Oh yeah, totally. It's definitely an inside job, for sure. Um, I had watched this news segment not too long ago about um, how Olympic sports, you know, they, there's all this infrastructure being built up around these different Olympic sports in these, in these developing countries, when, um, you know, after the Olympics leave, there's no, there's no benefit at all to the area where all this infrastructure is being built. And I was definitely relating that a lot to the baseball stadium at Shaco Bottom. You know, it's going to be built up, all this work's going to be put into building it. But there's really going to be no benefit, considering that no one around here is that big of Squirrels fans. Right. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest here. Right. Right? Yeah, and, and sports teams leave all the time, you know. Uh, yeah. They go to all the cities, so there's no guarantee that they'll even stay here, right? Exactly, exactly. It's an inside job. Totally like fly-by-night operation. It's not gonna. It's no long-term lasting effects for right. Richmond that are okay. positive. Yeah. Uh, I guess my last question would be, um, in terms of taxation, uh, do you feel that you could do, uh, have a better economic choice in allocating where that should be spent yourself if you had a choice instead of having politicians on your behalf deciding that for you? Um. Sure. You know, I've I've not lived in. I've only lived in Richmond for six, about six months now, um, but I. I'm a community college student and I do believe that I personally could come up with better ideas as to what this money could be used for, but I'm sure there's a ton of other locals who've lived here their whole lives that could come up with tons and tons of good reasons right, right. and ways to use that money. So. Right, but, it, but it will be your money though, right? It just doesn't belong to other people, right? Yeah, so I mean, if I were to able, able to keep my tax money right. that I make and, and put it towards better use, uh, yeah, totally. Absolutely, I could right. totally find better things to put that. <laughs> that's for. All right, great. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for coming out and I enjoy your, your support against, uh, against the Stock and Bottom Stadium. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, you take All good right, care. So, uh, I'd like to ask you uh, who you are, uh, where you're from, and uh, what position do you take in the... Uh, Government back sports stadium. Uh, I'm Bridge Allen. I live in Richmond in the Fan District, and I'm with the East Broad Street Task Force. We have been opposing this stadium issue for 10 years. 10 years? <laughs> uh, what is the East Broad uh, Task Force? East Broad Street Task Force is an advocate for East Broad Street and its environs, which includes Shaco Bottom, Churchill, and downtown. How do you feel about uh, government uh, stealing your money to fund uh, the sport hobbies of uh, other people? I think it's a disgrace. It's uh, corporate welfare. It's a, a form of uh, robbery. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, have you ever heard of the uh, Cato Institute? Yeah, you have. Oh, sure I have. The, I look at their website. In fact, they had uh, a piece on, um, I think, stadium financing. 
um, uh, with the type of uh, bonds that the mayor wants to use. That's correct. Yeah, there's, they also passed a report called uh, Caught Stealing, debunking the case for uh, D.C. baseball, in which they studied over 30 cities and found no positive uh, growth uh, for government-backed sports stadiums. Um, so have you ever heard of this report? Um, I, I, that may be the one that I, I read. Um, I'm not sure, but I'm, I mean, it is good for the people who get the money. Right, yeah, absolutely, yeah, the politicians, the, the right, right, yeah. Uh, I think they believe they're supposed to be a second private developer who's interested in building a private stadium off on, uh, I believe, Boulevard. Uh, uh, the Boulevard, we call it. Right, right. Yeah, his name is Dan Gecker. He's a well-known and successful um, uh, developer. Uh, he's done developments up that way before, and he came around and offered to do the development with his own money. Right, yeah, and that's private money. You don't have to steal from people to kind of fund that. The first, uh, one of the sports, state, sports stadiums in this country, the Yankee Stadium, was built privately. Um, you didn't need to take from the pockets of others to fund them, these particular sport uh, hobby stadiums. Um, so what do you, yeah. So well, you, you know, a real irony is that the parent team of the uh, Richmond Flying Squirrels, the uh, San Francisco Giants, paid for their own stadium. <laughs> uh, so then, if you, if you had a choice, then don't you feel that you can make better use of your own income, your own money, if you didn't have a local government trying to decide on, you know, on your behalf and how best to spend it yourself? Well, I think there's no question about that. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, all right. Well, thank you okay. so much uh, for coming out. My and pleasure. I continue the, uh, your activism yeah, support. Sure. I appreciate it very much. Um, do you publish your videos on a blog? Or yes. Uh, a it's called uh, Liberate RVA. You can find it on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. So it's mostly trying to turn to our community and mm -hmm. trying to solve our problems nice. uh, and turning away from government altogether. I think I've seen some of your videos. Really? Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, I, I surf around a lot in, uh, on the Facebook groups. Right. We put uh, links. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I do a lot of study in uh, free market research myself. Yeah. Um, and I, I find that's kind of, that's a solution, you know, uh, respect for private property um, and voluntary trade, aside from the cohesive nature of uh, politicians telling you how best the, your money should be spent, you know, by their opinion. This crowd should be in prison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are, they're, they're criminals. Oh, I, I agree. I agree very much. Yeah. I agree uh, very much. Robbery. It is robbery. It is if robbery. If you were I did it, we'd be behind We robbery. would. We definitely yeah. would be definitely would be. Well, good luck. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, tell me who you are, where you're from, and uh, what projection do you take on uh, government-backed sports stadiums? Uh, my name is Jeremy Weiland. Um, I'm from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm totally opposed to publicly-backed sports things. <laughs> and uh, could you tell us why? Uh, because the government, it's not the government's place to be telling people how money should be spent for entertainment, or anything like I mean I don't think really government has any purpose telling anybody to do anything but certainly on something as frivolous as this and there's no there's no evidence that they actually increase you know city revenue or uh, improve people's lives if people want a uh, sports stadium they should fund it privately and it'd be nice if they could do it without desecrating sacred ground Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, the first uh, sports stadium, uh, Yankee Stadium, uh, originally was provided by, by private funds. Uh, you know, you didn't need have to you didn't need to steal the the money and wealth of other people to fund you know their sport hobbies, for example. Yeah. Um, so I guess, what are your thoughts then on uh, taxation? Uh, well, I'm pretty much against taxation. Although I do think that it's important to cut taxes from the bottom up. So there's plenty of powerful, rich interests who benefit from the tax code. And it's important to understand that they have been uh, profiting off of government privilege for so long that what we really need to do if we're going to take care of the tax problem is cut taxes from the bottom up and uh, welfare from the top down. Yeah. So, uh, and you mentioned earlier uh, that you, worked, you have some work with the uh, Center of uh, Sailor well, Society. I'm not affiliated with it. You're not affiliated? Okay, yeah. okay. So I guess I imagine you've read the same uh, Cato Institute report, you know, constantly stealing, debunking the, uh, the myth yes. of uh, the <laughs> That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no there facts, no evidence. people in Richmond that, that, that read that stuff. Yeah, really? Absolutely. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm okay, unaware. That's, I came across it, like, recently, you know? Yeah. I've been meaning to reach out to you for a long time. Oh. <laughs> so then people say, like, what about the roads? You know, it's kind of like, well, what about my sports stadiums? Exactly. Right. Um, and you mentioned you wrote an essay recently. And, uh, uh, years ago, but uh, uh, an essay called "Let the Free Market Eat the Rich." I've also written lots of stuff from a. Uh, you know, I used to I used to identify as market anarchist. I'm not so big on markets as the single solution to every problem. Um, you know, I, I feel like anarchism is about trying to get in place um, a system of 
consensus decision making where we can figure out what kinds of economic systems we want, figure out what kind of political systems we want, you know, not to say that, you know, a market is the way we should go or a central planning system should be the way we go. And, you know, probably in a, in a genuine anarchist situation, lots of different systems could flourish. And that's what I'm really interested in, is trying to find out the sort of metapolitical um, uh, 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 system in which lots of people could realize their values without conflicting with others. Exactly, yeah, I agree so much with that. Uh, by thousands of rich, diverse communities, uh, and, and in terms of respect towards, I guess, uh, their own economic, uh, uh, I guess, relationships with one another, you know, as long as it's voluntary and consensual, right? Yeah, and, and people have different ends, right? I mean, that's that's the whole point of praxeology, right? Yeah. Is that people act purposefully, and it's not necessarily something that you can meter according to dollars, right? People have lots of different interests, and uh, balancing all those interests is something that requires um, real opening up to each other, real civic engagement, uh, real understanding of that you have to meet somebody where they're at mm -hmm. and that's what I think anarchism should be about it should be less about you know you know you know waving the torches and the pitchforks yeah. <laughs> and more about showing people demonstrating to people that we can really govern ourselves um, if we just give ourselves a little grace give ourselves a chance and you know extend extend the same respect that we want no, I love that. I love that. Um, what kind of work, I guess, uh, I guess, in terms of activism or personal work, uh, yeah. do you do? I guess towards, I guess, advancing towards a free and voluntary consensual society. Well, I work with an organization called Attack the System. <laughs> and, yeah. Nice. So we uh, we're interested in sort of uh, a we're kind of a reform movement for the anarchist movement. We think that a lot of it is uh, centered on really uh, fringe issues that, while important should not serve to divide the great interests that we all commonly have against the common enemy, which is the empire at home and abroad. And so we're working to try and find uh, cross-ideological opportunities. Um, we promote tactics like pan-secessionism, where we say, hey, everybody should secede, right? right? Not just certain people. And we don't think secession is a dirty word just because some racists use it 100 years ago. Or right. So. Yeah. Yeah, seceded from uh, down to the individual level. Right. Sure. Sure. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, so I guess maybe I'll look forward to you at the next uh, Liberty RBA gathering. I will try to make it. Yeah. <laughs> this is really great. No, I'm so glad to be, I guess, by chance. Yeah. Uh, no, this is really cool. Um, no, I, I was like, every, once a month I come across sometimes uh, an Austrian economist. And so um, it's like that movie X-Men running into like the other mutants. I yeah, guess the yeah. Other, <laughs> they're, they're out there. Um, I guess like you're mentioning, I guess, um, attack the system, you know, organizing that. And I think that's yeah. uh, very, I guess, very powerful and something that, that's kind of deeply needed. Absolutely. We have people from all different backgrounds who are trying to form a positive, productive dialogue around the issues that we have in common instead of focusing on the things that divide us. And I think that's so important for anarchists to work towards uh, because it really does prefigure the politics that they claim to promote, right? right. We want to see a society where people don't interact with each other um, through violence and force or even through like really crappy means of like, you know, denigrating each other and, you know, showing disrespect. And so if we want a society like that, we have to start working towards it now. Right. And we have to prefigure it in the way that we do the politics. That's, you know, frankly, that's what Occupy was about. And I was really involved in Occupy Richmond. And uh, whatever you want to say about the Occupy movement, it really did stick to its principles on process. Whatever, whatever it accomplished or didn't accomplish, it did it by consensus, and it did it in a way that tried to include everybody's voice. And that's something that any society that wants to govern itself without force has to learn how to do. Even if we didn't figure out how to do it at Occupy Richmond, we're eventually going to have to learn to do something like that. Right, yeah. It, it looked like spon uh, spontaneous order there. Uh, so I really like that kind of community uh, bonding that was created through there. And yeah, and, and trying to uh, organize something... Uh, I guess t towards the end of that goal, um, I, I was there in the first uh, week or two myself, mm -hmm. uh, but I found some inconsistencies. I found it, uh, I guess, it, well, that's probably time for another another subject. But yeah. I did did uh, value, I guess, uh, the camaraderie that was there, and in the way that a lot of these uh, organizations kind of facilitated, uh, I guess, the the needs that each other, I guess, the division of labor you saw, right. through, uh, voluntary, yeah. consensually. Um, yeah, one second. <laughs> I'm with the camera. Uh, so yeah, no, that's that's pretty cool. That's amazing. I'm so glad uh, that, that you showed up. Then. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it seemed like it was wasted effort. No, <laughs> I'm not a man of the year. no, same here, same here. Well, thank you for so much for coming out.